the myths. So the first myth, the first myth, let's, let's talk about this one. This one is interesting. And here is why I want to talk about this myth first. This is a question I hear almost universally from the now scores of women that we work with. I want to lead my most authentic and meaningful life and career. How do I do it? How do I do it? And the truth is, if you want to lead an authentic and meaningful life and career, that word authentic becomes really critical because for you to determine if something is authentic to you, you need to know what feels true to you. You need to understand who are you and what, what then feels true to you. And if you cannot answer what is truly authentic for you, you're not going to be able to create that authentic life and career. So let's talk about that. This is a good starting point. So this is my first question for all of you. And let me actually, let me do this in the form of a poll. So you will see a poll on your screen. Tell me, how well do you think you know yourself? On a scale of one to 10, one being the lowest, 10 being the highest, or somewhere in between, we're all on a journey. Where are you right now? Let the responses come in. All right. Okay, I see a lot of... I see fives, I see sixes, I see sevens, I see eights. I see nine, some nines. All right, let's let's end the poll. Let's end the poll now. And here are the results. All right, so here is here is what is interesting about about this 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 whole question. Now, many of us, many of us, and I'm sure. Many of you are also thinking, of course, I know myself. Of course, I know myself. I have been thinking about myself. I have been living with myself for the last 30, 40 plus years, however old you are. Uh, of course, I've had a lot of time over the years to think about myself, to get to know myself. So, so yes, I know myself. And so there is this tendency to genuinely believe that we know ourselves. But, but, and this is amusing as well as instructive at the same time. Now, this has actually been researched formally. So there's someone by the name of Tasha Urich, who is a researcher out of Harvard. And she's been a guest mentor with us at Shinomics. I've even done a podcast interview with her. Her research reveals something quite interesting. Her research reveals that 90% of people think they are self-aware, but only 10 to 15% are. Now that's quite a discrepancy. That is quite a discrepancy. So what she's saying in a room of 100 people, 90% of them, 90 of them are kidding themselves, are fooling themselves. Anyone want to share with me, tell me in the chat, why? Why it's such a huge discrepancy? So many of us believe we know ourselves, but how could it be that only 10% of us can actually say, yes, 
we are truly self-aware. All right, tell me. I'm looking at the responses, we most know only the outer self, nice. We keep changing and it's hard to notice those changes. Not much introspection, maybe, because our actions don't reflect who we really are. We have been influenced what people around us tell us. Maybe they are concluding based on the, a successful career, sure. What, how do we define self-awareness? Well, self-awareness, and we'll, today we won't go over all the major pillars, but there are seven key pillars of self-awareness. And some of them, just to give you uh, an indication, include things like knowing what you value, knowing your strengths, equally knowing your weaknesses, knowing what you want, knowing what you desire, knowing what your aspirations are, knowing, uh, knowing what kinds of environments you thrive in. All of that is internal self-awareness equally there's external self-awareness, which is knowing how other people see us, how what is the impact we are having on others, how are others reacting or responding to us. All of that, all dimensions of internal and external self-awareness then equate to full self-awareness or you being able to say, yes, I know myself. So let me today for now just give you a few things that get in the way. We won't be able to do a deep dive into self-awareness, but let's at least start to scratch the surface a little bit. So, all right, tell me what you notice on this slide. What do you notice on this slide? Other than the two blue lines somehow that have magically appeared on my screen, what do you notice on this slide? Mm. 23 23 notice how did i did i no and again notice my question i did not say do you notice if something is off i did not ask do you notice if something is wrong i did not ask do you notice if something should be different. You could have easily said, I notice a beautiful sequence of four numbers in multiples of five, or I just see five numbers, no judgment. They're five numbers, good, bad, doesn't matter. Now, why does this happen? Why does our eye go to what is off, what is wrong, what is missing? It actually has nothing to do with you as a person. It doesn't mean you are an inherently negative person. It all has to do with our biology. So this is the first reason why we fail to truly see ourselves for who we are. Because we are wired to more quickly, more quickly, more easily pick out what is not working, what is wrong, what is missing, than actually looking at all of the good in um in in our uh... all right, someone's having a really fun time with the doodles. Uh, Shri or uh, anybody from the Shinomics team, I'm, I'm going to request your help to take the doodles off. Thank you. So that's one reason um, why this happens. And then the second thing is just the cultural narratives, as we began discussing earlier, which really colors and clouds how we view ourselves. The, the identities that we take on and the narratives that we form around those identities, thanks to our conditioning also then prevents us from truly seeing ourselves for who we are. And let me give you an example of this, but first a question. And let's be honest, now we know a little each other a little bit, it's been about 
30 minutes. So you can be honest with me. Do you feel even the slightest bit uncomfortable talking about your work and your accomplishments? Do you feel even the slightest bit of discomfort thinking, gosh, why do I, this feels promotional. This feels like I'm bragging. Why do I even have to do this? All right. Okay. I'm seeing a lot of yeses in the chat. I've seen, and look, I, I see this happening often. Um, this is, this is universal. This is almost universal. Now, why again, why is it you? something you as an individual that is um that um that that you're doing something wrong no no it, it this comes down to conditioning so one thing we know again from research is and look this is changing today but if you go back to when most of us were growing up 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, yes, the people around us, our parents, authority figures, teachers, they're all, they were all doing the best they could, but consciously or unconsciously, they did pass on a different set of messages to boys versus girls. Boys were told, go out there, go play, go take risks, go be in charge. And if you fall, it's okay. Dust yourself off. Pick yourself back up again and get going. Agentic values, right? Own your agency. Own your power. What do we tell our girls? Be a good girl. Stay at home. Do your homework. Focus on keeping everyone happy. Focus on relationships. Focus on maintaining this harmony with everyone around you. Build rapport with uh, others. Be humble. Be humble. Don't draw too much attention to yourself. And be patient. Be patient. Opportunities will come. Notice how different, how different it can be when... Um, when, when you have two sets of individuals raised with two different sets of values, do you think if we do this, if this happens, and then you fast forward, you take that same boy and girl, 30 years later, now they're in the workplace, do you think this will impact how they show up in the workplace? Yes or no? Will this impact how we show up. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No question. Absolutely. And this is why, this is why so many of you said, yes, I feel uncomfortable because you have been conditioned to not talk about yourself. You have been conditioned to not draw too much attention to yourself, your work, your accomplishments, which is why you feel so uncomfortable. As this HBR article highlights as well, this is why as women, we stay out of the spotlight at work because most women reject those agentic values because we feel it's self-promotional and we favor the mission-oriented communal style. Now, look, neither is good or bad. No judgment, no judgment here whatsoever. There are a lot of strengths, a lot of strengths in both styles of leadership. But what we're saying is when you have one set of individuals who's more conditioned to adopt one style of leadership, and then you go into the workplace where a different style of leadership is being expected, that's then, then it's like hitting hitting against a wall. And that's when you feel frustrated, like why isn't this giving me the results that I, that I want? And we get, we get caught, we, we get caught in this loop with not even realizing what is happening. So if the belief is as a woman, I must be humble. Well, what is the thought? Well, the thought is, okay, then I, I shouldn't talk about my work. I shouldn't brag. And then how does, how does it make you feel if you actually do that? You feel uncomfortable making yourself visible. What are the actions that leads to a more often than not 
unless someone is encouraging us, unless someone is nudging us, we don't take action. We don't take action. And then we're wondering, why did this person next to me, who's not even nearly as competent as me, how is this person getting ahead? How is this person getting all the acclaim? How is this person getting all the credit? How is this person getting getting the 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 results, the success, the accolades that that I want? So point is, I hate to say it, but this is also a positive. You are not who you think you are. You are who you have learned to be. Your biology and sociology has shaped you into thinking of yourself in a certain way. Because of which 90% of you are underestimating your own potential. You're underestimating your own self-worth. You are not accurately assessing or evaluating your true level of performance, your true potential. So no, this is the first myth. I just want to bust that. Yes, we may think we know ourselves, but actually we don't. And that is what stops us from seeing our potential. And I say, this is a good thing. This is a good thing because the more you go on this journey of building your self-awareness, the more clearly you will start to see yourself and your potential and you start to make those changes and reinventions that you want to. But first, let's begin by just must busting this myth. All right, how are we doing? Shall we move on to myth number two? All right. Let's continue. Let's this 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 one is a really interesting one as well. And this one 